Before we get into this video, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about a new and exciting app that I am working with called Tazit. Tazit allows you to schedule a video call one-on-one -on -one with me so that you and I can go over your engine build and I can help answer any questions that you have. I get a ton of messages every single day on Facebook, Instagram, and even on the YouTube comment section, which is awesome. I love it and I love being able to help you guys whenever I can, but I get so many that it, sometimes I miss some and they slip through the cracks. If you wanna guarantee that your message never slips through the cracks again, please visit my Tazit profile with the link in the description. Thank you and let's get back to the video. So, uh, the keen-eyed viewers amongst you will have noticed that this is in fact not a black C6 Z06 Corvette and I'm in fact not Jacob. Uh, my name is Ben, I'm normally on that side of the camera. Um, I'm Jacob's cameraman and his editor. Bit of background on me, I work at a lovely place called Muscle Rod Shop. Uh, shop here in Bernie, Texas, actually like half a mile down the road from Smetting. I uh, work on classic muscle cars, resto mods, that sort of thing. Um, and pretty much if it's got a Chevy motor in it, it's got a Smetting motor in it. Smetting Performance 416, also Smetting motor. This is their 383 Cruiser. Another Smetting 383. So we're, uh, we're big fans of Jacob and Smetting's work over there. Um, but back to this car, which is not a muscle rod car. This is a Ben disaster project at the moment. This is my 2001 Camaro Z28 or Z28 for those of you not from America. So this is my Z28. Um, I've had it for about three years now. It is a LS1 T56 car and it's been good fun. I've wanted a early 2000s LS car for a long time. I wanted a C5 uh, back when Jacob had his and Jacob's kind of the reason I got this car because, well, LS has seemed like a good time. Um, so I've had it for about three years. When I bought it, it had a 383 uh, stroker in it, which is you just take a 5.7 or an LS1 in this case, but a 5.7, put a four inch stroke in it, you get a 383, take a 6.0, put a four inch stroke in it, you get a 4.06, take a 6.2, put a four inch stroke in it, you get a 4.16. That's kind of the basic math of stroker LS motors. Um, so this had a 383 in it built by whomst I do not know, but it kind of just slowly got worse over the years um, until recently when it decided that it doesn't want to do that anymore and started drinking like a quart of oil every like 500 miles. And it wasn't leaking, which means it was going somewhere and that's not good. And then it started to drink coolant, which isn't good. So now it's out, there's nothing in there. So motor is out taking it to Jacob over at Smetting. Um, and we're gonna put together a nice little video series for y'all on building a 383 LS1. Uh, pretty cool motor combo. Jacob will tell you more about it, either later in this video or in the next video you see where we start to build it. But this video is going to be a bit of me um, and a bit of Jacob and a bit of our friends taking this thing apart and getting it ready uh, to have the motor pulled so that it can go to Jacob so that we can rebuild it. So this video, tear down, engine tear down, engine assessing what's wrong with it. Why is it doing what it's doing? Um, are there good parts in it? Are we gonna keep anything? Are we gonna change anything out? That sort of thing. Um, and the next video, we'll get into machining and building and putting together and that sort of thing. Um, and then we'll get some dyno results for a 383 LS, which is a pretty uh, common and desirable motor combo. Um, also cathedral port heads, which isn't something that Smetting normally deals with. So that'll be interesting to put some dyno numbers together with that. But as all projects do, scope creep. Um, so <laughs> while it's here and while it's taken apart, um, we're gonna do a couple things. Number one, new intake manifold, because this had a stock LS6 manifold on it. 01 and 02 Z28 and SS Camaros came with LS6 manifolds on LS1s which is pretty neat and convenient. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new clutch and a new throat bearing in it since it's out. Um, and the old exhaust is terrible. So that's going away and it's getting a full three inch stainless X pipe exhaust. Factory, these cars had Y pipes. So that is uh, that is what's happening there. 
and then a few other things while it's there. And we're going to take you along, show you the build, what all is happening, and that sort of thing. Um, so sit back and enjoy some Z28 4th Gen Camaro content. Day two of Camaro disassembly. Massive new piece of the puzzle. You have a car to Jacob. Howdy. it. You're all familiar with Jacob. Uh, Jacob stopped by so we can wrench on the Camaro a bit more before we hopefully pull the motor out tomorrow. I don't know. If you haven't noticed, it's mostly still in there. Um, got the intake manifold pulled off yesterday. Coiled some other things. Uh, it was late. I didn't feel like lying on the ground. So that's how far we got. Uh, hopefully we're going to get wiring out Coolers out, fluids out. Ideally, I'd like it to get it to just exhaust needs to come out, drive shaft needs to come out. So that can happen tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully tomorrow, motor out. Onward.
Anyway, it is Friday. The Camaro is far more taken apart than it was yesterday, two days ago even. Uh, motor is basically ready to be pulled. The only thing left is motor mounts. Trans is still in it. We're going to pull that out first. Still have to disconnect the line going to the clutch. And then that is ready to drop. You have to take the front bumpers off on these cars because, as you can see, hoist hooked up. That's not going to work. The front bumper sticks out to about there. So if you're coming out the top, bumper has to come off. Not a huge deal. It's like 10 clips, 6 bolts, not a problem. And then you can hook that up. You saw Jacob and I pull all that out. All of the wiring is out. Parts are loosely organized there. Drive shaft, bumper there. This is quite terrible. Um, I knew that this was here. I was aware of this. Uh, this is not a surprise to anybody. I mean, it's not a surprise to me. Uh, none of this is going back in, and that makes me incredibly happy. So we have gross rusty headers. Going to not super great. <laughs> really not super great welds because this is a factory Y pipe going to a delete pipe to a pipes muffler. Yes, I had to cut it off in places because that's the only way to take this out. So it got cut out. None of this is going back in. I have a full system speeding up here from flange to tip. So a few moments, guys should be here. We can get this thing officially motor and transmission list. Back at the shop now with Ben's LS1 that was converted to a 383 previously. So we got the motor down, he ran it, he got the car, had a 383 in it, really cool setup, but it was always consuming a little bit of coolant. Not ideal. We kind of just assumed that maybe the overflow tank wasn't getting topped off all the way, but it kept consuming coolant, kept consuming coolant, started to throw some weird misfire codes, so we deemed it time to Let's go ahead and get this 383 out of the car. Let's go through it, see what he's got to begin with, and then see what we can do to fix it, and maybe make a little more power along the way. So, quick overview. It looks like it already had, uh, it did have a 383 rotating kit. It's got a forged four inch stroke crank. It's got some good looking H-beam rods with Air P2000 hardware. It had 4032 alloy Icon pistons. Uh, looks like we had a comp cam, some lifters, timing set. We, we had all the good parts. But the deck finish, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but you guys might be able to see some wispy marks where the previous, whoever surfaced this, the cutter came through and made its pass. That's probably caused from the jig used to hold the block not being rigid enough. And so the block was moving a little bit and the cutter was chattering. And I bet that all these little, this rough finish is what caused it to have a little internal coolant leak. So, now that it's at our shop, 
we are going to put the block into our Haas CNC machine, which we have a very rigid fixed string for, plus we have coolant running in the machine. So we'll resurface the decks, make those true again. We're going to put a new set of pistons on just because the skirts are a little worn. It's just part of the deal. This motor did have, we think, a minimum of 20,000 miles. So we're gonna deck the block, hone it a couple thou, put new pistons on, rebalance the crankshaft. We are gonna step the camshaft up. This cam is 237, 245. We're gonna put one in that's 247, 255. So we're gonna go plus 10 degrees, intake and exhaust duration. The cylinder heads it had on were a set of factory 243 castings that have been CNC ported. We're gonna send those out to get refreshed. Uh, we're gonna do new bronze guides, do a touch up the valve job, do hollow stem valves, and those should complement this combo really well. Compression is gonna be about 12 to one, so should be a ripper. And then once we're done machining, assembling, blueprinting the whole engine, we're gonna take it into the engine diner room and see exactly how much horsepower a modern 12 to one 383 Cathedral Port LS engine can make. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. It's gonna be pretty cool, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.